In this video I will showcase the oil brushes. I will not show you the express oil brushes, because they are exactly the same. I excluded some brushes with impasto, because express oil don't have that option. The advantage of express oils is that they perform faster. You can also use dual brush tip brushes and use extra blending modes like multiply or overlay. Oil brushes don't allow to use these features. You can sort the brush groups by dragging on the dotted icon on the right of the group name. I ordered them the same order I already have before. Let's start with flat brushes. The flat brushes try to mimic real flat brushes. The dry sided is good to emulate a low loaded brush. In real media, these kind of brushes always put most pigment on top and almost nothing on the bottom, being affected by the paper. This is good moment to say that almost all my brushes are set to use tilt rotation. The gentle brushes are just that their name suggests. They are good to apply small amount of paint, even if you apply strong pressure with your stylus. They are pretty good for portraits. The flat thick is just that, a flat brush with high thickness. The bristle brushes emulates brand new flat brushes, like filbert or 2 inch brush. They range from very thin to more sparse and thick bristles. They are good to fill large areas, but are even better if you use in blend mode. The flat smooth is just what the name says. It's not a traditional painting brush, but it may be very useful if you need smoothness. The eroded brushes are maybe the most interesting ones in this group. 10 emulate eroded or wasted brushes. They are very expressive and provide a nice painterly experience. Each brush stroke has some variations. They are created using the new Rebel 7 brush creation features. I continue with the round brushes. The round bristles are the same as flat brushes, but in round shape. They are more sensitive to pressure, because the round shape covers more area than a flat shape. The fingerprint is exactly that. It's like painting with your finger. If you just tap with the stylus, it will stamp a fingerprint. If you apply brush strokes, it's like dragging the paint around. The gentle brushes are the same as flat brushes, with round shape. The eroded ones are the same as the flat ones, but they feel different. I didn't create more variants, because all were almost the same. The grainy brushes have some grain variations. They may not be realistic, but are very useful for painting.
the round thick is a good one. Being in round shape, it gets more interesting thickness variations than the flat thick. The impasto structure has only one purpose. This is to add maximum thickness when you use structures. I show you how it works. Import any structure. It works better with high contrast structures like the ones created by Justice or the ones you create during the Sumanagashi course. In fact, I use this brush to apply the hair effects on the portrait of the cover for this brush collection. This brush may only have one purpose, but it's wonderful and very useful. The tapered brush is just that. It's very useful to paint foliage or to create stylized brush strokes. It also has some transparency, making it more interesting. The round-sided is also a tapered brush, but more bristly. The detailer brushes are ideal to paint details. I have two variants. One for dry effect and the other for the wet effect. For the wet detailer, you may have to reset the values to default. The knives are very flat brushes. The loaded thin may be considered the default knife. Its strange rebel don't have any default brush like this one. It is almost no impasto, so you can use it to scrape or blend zones with thickness. This brush is very sensitive to oiliness. With lower value, you get a dry effect. With high value, you get a very smooth brush stroke. You can paint everything with brush in the next one. It's pretty good to paint strong shaped areas like mountains or petals on the flowers. The loaded knife is the same as loaded thin, but with a high amount of impasto. This brush is very wonderful, especially if you like to paint with thickness. It's also very good to paint abstract. I could spend all day only with that brush. The other knives are just knives with different textures and sometimes with thickness. You can use them to create undetermined textures like foliage, rocks on the mountains, or anything else. The rake brushes emulate real rake brushes. This means brushes that create parallel lines. 
I added some variations over the default rakes. They are useful to create grass or hairs. You usually paint first in paint mode. Then you change to blend mode to make it look not so sharp. The rake random is very interesting. Each brush stroke creates different lines, in different sizes. The splats, in this case, are more like stains or spots of paint, instead of splats. These splats are very sensitive to tilt. With more brush tilt, the splat shapes are being more stretched. The Splat Builder is maybe my preferred brush of all. It creates big and random splat areas. It's very expressive. It's good for so many uses. It's a good cloud creator. It's also good to create treetops. It's amazing to create abstracts, or to be used with the techniques explained in the course Spontaneous Watercolor. And, of course, it's good to create splats. Use it in paint and mix mode to create even more interesting shapes. The dabs and textures group is full of brushes which cannot be categorized in other groups. It's also good to add textures to your paintings. The abstract brush is good to create random shapes. The impasto brush is good to add thickness based on textures. To change the texture of this brush, open the Brush Creator. Go to Textures tab. Select Background Texture 1 and click over the texture to change it. You may have to install the texture manually or in batch installing them in the Grains folder. I already have some of the structures installed as Grains. The organic brushes just have an undetermined texture. The tree brushes are created to paint foliage on the trees. But they are also good for any texturing process. The particle brushes create random particle effects. The difference between each particle brushes is the amount of them. The dirt brushes have this name because they resemble dirt. The rocks brush is another very interesting brush. By itself, it looks pretty good. It looks like you are creating rocks. But, if you use it with metallics, it's gorgeous. It looks very different. Instead of rocks, it seems you are painting mountains.
the other rock brushes add different rock shapes. The sponges are stamping brushes, not like if you're using sponges to drag paint around the canvas. The second one adds more variety and some softness. Both are good to create abstracts, clouds, background or grungy effects. The last four brushes are reused from my previous watercolor brush pack. I like them so much and are very useful, so I decided to include them. The nature brushes will be showcased on a different video. I hope you like the brushes.